Okay, so you've decided you're moving to Cleveland, but you want to know what kind of home you can get for right around $250,000. Well, in this video, I got you covered. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland. I'm Patty, Patty Sell CLE, and I make videos about all things Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and even down South. You know that drill. If you want to, don't want to miss any of my videos, hit that subscribe, hit the like, share, leave a comment. I love it. Okay, let's just dive right in. Last week, I did a video on what kind of house you can get in Cuyahoga County, which is where Cleveland is situated, for right around $500,000. And I had a few comments from people saying, hey, great video, we are moving to Cleveland, but we are really looking right around the $250,000 to $250,000 range. Can you do a video on that? Well, here it is, guys. Okay. I ran a list, I did it yesterday, I didn't get a chance to make the video, but you know, the market changes every day. So yesterday I did all my research, all in Cuyahoga County. I did a search in the MLS for homes in Cuyahoga County only. So if you're looking in Lorain County, Lake County, Summit County, uh, give me a call, I'll help you with that. Um, but we are focusing right in where Cleveland is situated, Cleveland and the inner ring suburbs. So I ran a MLS search for $175,000 up to $250,000. I did this yesterday. Um, in this market, typically houses come on the market Wednesday or Thursday. So <clears throat> there were a few new, uh, few new listings yesterday, and I have the MLS up today. Same search. Some things have changed. Uh, yesterday, were, uh, there were 123 active listings in all of Cuyahoga County. 175 to 250. Today there are 122. So I have my notes uh, of everything. This was from yesterday. So we're just going to dive right in and I'm kind of do this. I'm going to do the same format as I did last week. I just am going to go in alphabetical order. We're going to go back and forth between the west side and the east side, depending on what letter the suburb it starts with. So let's go.
Okay, we're gonna head back west, uh, just south, um, it's southwest, it's called Berea. It's been a while since I've done a Berea video. It's a college town, Baldwin Wallace is there. You're close to 71, you're close to the Metro Parks. Schools are okay. Um, I think they're rated a C. Um, I gotta check that. Okay, so I just checked the, ML checked the MLS. This house was being sold as is. It needed a total gut. Um, it's being, it was being sold. It's a four bed, two bath, almost 2,200 square feet, two, $209,000. It was on the market for two days. It's sold. So Berea is highly sought after. Even with a total gut, it probably went for being on the market for two days. Uh, it probably went for pretty close to $200,000. So nothing available in Berea for under $250,000. Sorry. If you had your hopes set on that, it's not available. Let's stay west. Let's go even more further south. Um, it's kind of off of 480-ish, kind of past Independence. I have a map up here, Broadview Heights. This house, there's only one in Broadview Heights. It's been on the market for 133 days. Three beds, two bath, um, $238,000, but it's on almost an acre and it needs work. So Broadview Heights has amazing schools. It's constantly in the top 10. Broadview, Brexville Heights, they're, they're the, they share a school district. It's beautiful. It's hilly out there. It's close to the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Highly sought after area, but you're going to pay. I mean, we're talking, there's some million dollar homes in that, in that area. So only one. It's a gut. But if you want to live in that area, it's beautiful. But, and it's almost on an acre. There's got to be something wrong with it. It's 1,500 square feet. Well, to be on the market for 132 days. It's a shame. Okay, staying on the west side. And what's interesting is a lot of the suburbs I talked about last week for $500,000, it didn't have a ton of suburbs. I think, I can't remember how many there were. There weren't a ton of houses, but we have some suburbs that we didn't even cover. Like Berea wasn't on the list last week. And now there's nothing in Berea. But let's keep going to Brook Park. There are um, <clears throat> four homes for sale. Two, three, four, five. Now, yeah, there's four or five homes for sale. I'm just going to pick and choose. I can't do all of them. There's 122 houses. I'm just going to pick and choose ones that are kind of new to the market just to give you a feel for what kind of house you're going to get in each of the different suburbs. So Brook Park is part of the Berea school systems. Like I said, they get a C, achievements a D. They're just average schools. Um, Berea Brook Park, you're not going to get these big, huge, new there's, and Berea has some newer developments, but Brook Park for sure. When I think of Brook Park, I think of like brick ranches, smaller bungalows, but mainly I think of maybe because my friend lived in Brook Park when she first got married. Um, and she had a nice, it was a nice house, it had a full basement, but that's what I think of when I um, um, think of Brook Park. Uh, what's nice is their taxes are low, under 3%. Here's one for sale on Shaf. It's been on the market two days, 244 nine, so basically $245,000, three beds, two full bath, one half bath, almost 1,400 square feet, and a base finished basement of 1,000 square feet. Um, so Brook Park, not bad, close to the airport, close to 480, 71, not a bad area. You know, it's closer to Par Parma area. So there you go. Four homes for sale in Brook Park. Okay, we're staying west, and we're kind of in that same area. It's called Brooklyn. There are two for sale. One's been on the market for 42 days. The other one's on the market for nine days. And this one that's been on the market for nine days is um, Memphis Villas South. Um, it's $250,000, three beds, one full bath, one half bath, about 1,300 square feet. Really nice house, um, full basement, but it's unfinished. Um, the schools have their, they have their own school system, Brooklyn schools. It gets a C, which is average schools. And another thing I think of with Brooklyn, you're going to get those smaller houses, kind of like what you see in Parma, a lot of ranches, um, with big basements, a lot of small bungalows, uh, niche actually gives it a B plus. So, cause you're close to shopping, you're close to downtown Cleveland, the location's great. So if you're not worried about, you know, the school systems or, I'm okay with a C. My kids went to a school system that was rated a C. They're college graduates. They're doing just fine. They were in AP classes. They graduated in four years. So, you know, personal preference. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Cleveland City itself. I'm gonna break it down into a couple of different neighborhoods 
And just remember, I only pulled the list for 175,000 to 250. So if you're looking one for one of those really big bargains in Cleveland, I didn't go any lower than 175. Yesterday they were 27 for sale. And today there's only 25 for sale. And one of the ones that I was highlighting, I texted my cousin who's looking for a house in the West Park area. I go, oh my gosh, Molly, we need to go see this. It's been on the market for 12 days. We didn't get to see it last week. Let's go look at it. And an hour later, so I have the picture up here. Um, we'll start with West Park. Uh, two hours later, I went, it was already pending. So things change that quickly. So um, let's talk about West Park. One just came on the market yesterday and it was on Tuttle and it's been on the market. So two days now, $200,000, less than 1400 square feet. It's on Tuttle's kind of a weird street. Um, is Tuttle the one that's like one way? It's weird. It's like a cut through to get through to Cam's Corners off Rocky River Drive and like, well, not Rocky River Drive, but like Warren Road and Munn and all those. Um, but three bedrooms, one bath. It's a small house, but you're in West Park. West Park is highly sought after. It's where I grew up. Things, a lot of houses don't really go on the market in West Park because I have so many friends who just bought their parents' house. So when things come up in West Park, they pretty much go pretty quickly. I'm shocked that Oxford took 12 days to sell. This one I'm also shocked about. Rocky River Drive, right down the road from the airport. It's right on the corner of Bradgate, which is just south of Lorraine. Uh, so Rocky River Drive is a major street. It'll take you all the way through to Lakewood. It'll take you all the way to the airport. Um, <clears throat> busy street. But what's nice about this house is that the driveway is actually on Bradgate. This house, it's been on the market for 31 days. $229,000, four beds, two full baths. The kitchen has just been redone. Over 2,200 square feet. It's really nice. I was looking, I was on the phone with my teammate who still lives in the house she grew up in, in West Park. And we're on the, we're talking about these homes in West Park. And we're like, why didn't this sell? She's like, well, maybe the basement. I don't know. The basement's just an old basement, but I think this house is gorgeous. Um, now this one on Eleanor, I'm pretty sure this is still for sale. It is. Nine days on the market. $230,000. Three beds, two bath, 1,300 square feet. It is a nice ranch and it's on a slab, but where it's located is between Rocky River Drive, like I said, that main road, and then Puritus which parts of Puritus are okay, but it's, I grew, I lived before we moved to Marquis, which is bigger home. Like I lived on West 157th off of Puritus and it was fine and it's still okay, but I don't know if I'd pay $230,000 for a 1300 square foot ranch. And when I was talking to my teammate, Judy yesterday, we were both like, can you believe this? Well, we'll see. It's still on the market. Um, and then one more I'm going to do, it's, um, off of West 140th, it's up, the further, the further east you get from like Cam's Corners is like 165th, 170th, all the way to about 140th is pretty much the breaking point. So it's called Waynestead, and this house is almost $250,000. And so John Marshall is the high school on 140th, and some of the streets are pretty nice, but you know, you've got the riffraff from the high school, what can I say? Um, but for $250,000, I don't know that I would buy this house. And it's been, well, it just went on the market yesterday. So we'll see. And it's 1,500 square feet. So I, I'm not sure. It's crazy, but it's got a finished basement. We'll see what happens to it. So that's West Park. Um, let's talk about the other nice area. You know, to me, the highly sought after neighborhoods in Cleveland are, well, you're, you're already going to say Ohio City, Tremont. And then I'm going to say West Park and um, Old Brooklyn. To me, those are the best neighborhoods. Or the Detroit Shoreway area, but even that gets a little bit... It, you got to be picky and choosy where you are in the Detroit Shore, Shoreway area. So let's talk about... Um, oh, let's see. Okay, Old Brooklyn. I'm only going to talk about a couple. So this one on Mayhew, it's $178,000. It's been on the market for 34 days it went off the market and it's back on the market. So probably because of the inspection. So who knows what's wrong with it? 1300 square feet. Um, I've done an old Brooklyn video before. It's an up and coming area. 
my grandma, my aunt and uncle used to live in, in Old Brooklyn. They got a lot of things going for it. They got a really nice community development corporation. They do movies in the park. In the summertime, they have a farmer's market. Um, they got cool bars and restaurants, you know, not quite as, well, I'm biased because I grew up in West Park, but um, so, um, Old Brooklyn is not that bad. I like it. It's really nice. Okay. And this other one I want to show you is on Searsdale. I actually showed this house to a client back in January and it's still on the market and the agent, it's been totally gutted. So it's been on the market for 149 days. Three beds, one bath. It's really nice. Almost 1,300 square feet. Um, did I say how much it was? I didn't put the price on it. I'll have to look. Um, oh, 249. Nope, that's not it. That's the other one. That's Waynestead. Uh, where is it? Sears. Yeah, Searsdale. $183,000. That's actually a really good price. I actually, And the house next to it was almost like a whole new build. Not a bad area. And the agent even called me and she's like, well, what did you think? And it just, the neighborhood didn't work out for my client. His wife works closer to the Ohio City area. Um, their daughter goes to school in that area and they didn't want it to switch schools. But she's like beyond, she can't figure out why the house won't sell. And like, they can't go any lower. They put really nice fixtures in there. The kitchen's nice. Who knows? But $183,000, that's not bad for under $200,000. Pretty good. Um, let's stay in Old Brooklyn. This one's on Portman, $220,000, $220,000. Been on the market 23 days. It's been totally rehabbed. So under $220,000, two ninety nine. Totally rehabbed, three beds, two full baths, um, about 1,200 square feet. So not bad. Um, yeah, so that's old. that's Old Brooklyn. We already did West Park. Let's talk about... Let's talk about Tremont. People call me all the time. Hey, I want to buy a house for $125,000 in Tremont or Ohio City. I go, okay, do you want to gut it? Are you looking for a rehab then? No, 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 no. We want it moving ready. Like, yeah, that's not going to happen in Tremont or Ohio City. There was one house for one house. I have this one house on Brayton Road. It's $200,000. Only been on the market. It's actually cute. Two beds, one bath. It's really tiny. It's almost like a cottage. So if you are really have your heart set on, um, on Tremont because you want to walk everywhere, then this might be it for one or two people. It's super cute for $200,000 and it's walkable to everything in the Tremont area. Um, and then let's talk about Ohio City. Not a lot in Ohio City. West 57th Street. So in the heart of Ohio City, you can walk. I mean, that's where everybody wants to be is Ohio City. It's $205,000. It's big. It's 2,000 square feet. It's cash only. And it's down to its studs. So, um, but I'm pretty sure like the roof is new. And all you have to do is put the walls up and put in your furnishing, your cabinets, your flooring, your fixtures, all that. But even still for a house that is all studs, 200 actually it's two hundred five thousand dollars. that's kind of crazy so if that gives you a sense of what you can get in like old brooklyn first west park versus tremont and ohio city i hope that gives you some sort of you know a good idea of what you're going to get for those prices okay we're in cleveland let's head out east to cleveland heights i've done a cleveland heights video before and I think I've mentioned that I feel like Cleveland Heights on the east side is very similar to Lakewood on the west side. They're both right next to Cleveland, one east, one west. Um, they're both very liberal, you know, a lot of liberal people live there. Um, a lot of young people live there. Cleveland Heights is close to John Carroll. It's close to Case Western Reserve. It's close to the clinic, University Hospital. Um, I think I mentioned there's no highways to get there. You got to take Carnegie or another Chester, um, but they've made it so it's pretty. It's a pretty easy commute. Also, the taxes are super super high, um, and I mention this all the time. Cleveland Heights, uh, University Heights, and Shaker have the three highest taxes in all of Cuyahoga County. And another thing I do not like about Cleveland Heights, and this is pretty much for. You can pretty much, you're pretty safe. If the suburb has heights at the end of it, 
you have what's called a point of sale. And so all of the houses in those suburbs that have a point of sale requirement means the city has to come out. When you put your house up on the market, a lot of times they'll say, no, I'm not going to do it till I get an offer in or whatever. Um, or a lot of times if they're really, hey, I want to get this house sold, they order that point of sale and somebody from the city comes out and does an inspection and hands you a piece of paper or many pieces of paper and says, these violations need to be taken care of before title can transfer to a new owner. So when you go to look at a house in Cleveland Heights, like, oh, this is such a great bargain and it needs some fixing up, but I can do it myself. It doesn't really work that way because they'll, what they'll do is they'll hand you the piece of paper and they'll put a price tag on what they assume it's going to cost to fix all these violations. Now, if you want to get them done when you own the house, that's fine. Get them fixed. They'll come back out. Okay, done, done, done. Or if you're just going to say, nope, <laughs> And they'll say the seller has to uh, assume, no, the buyer will assume the POS violations, but you're gonna have to take that number that they give you, which could be a really hefty number. And even if you're a handy person, like, hey, I'm a licensed contractor, I can do this myself. Um, I know people have petitioned the city and said, okay, I can do this for X amount of money. You gotta put that money in escrow. So if they say it's gonna cost $25,000 at the end, you need to come up with that $25,000 to fix those violations. So keep that in mind with Cleveland Heights. High taxes, um, Cleveland Heights schools are, they're rated like a C or a D, um, but there's beautiful homes in Cleveland Heights, University Heights, Shaker Heights. They're beautiful old Tudors, beautiful brick colonials. So let's just talk about what's for sale. There's 18 for sale in Cleveland Heights. Um, so let's see, this one on South Taylor has been on the market for six days. 184.9, three beds, two baths, 1,600 square feet and a 1,000 square foot basement. So not bad. Now this one is back on the market in Oak Hill, 200,000. Three beds, one full bath, one half bath. Um, it's back on the market, so total of 30 days. So uh, it's a pretty home. Almost 1,800 square feet with a 700 square foot finished basement. It's really pretty, um, but it's back on the market due to the inspection. So who knows what's wrong with it? Who knows? Um, let's see, I got two more in Cleveland Heights. Let's talk about Kildare, 15 days on the market, 209,000. Three beds, one full bath, one half bath, almost 1,600 square feet. And it's really cute. So for around 200, and like I said, you can get some really nice homes. And as long as it's POS violation free, there, be, Cleveland Heights has awesome, it's very, uh, what can I say, eclectic. You have the Cedar Lee Theater. I mean, you go down Cedar and Lee, you just have restaurants and bars and coffee shops. And in the summertime, and I think I did my video in the summertime, people are sitting outside. It's kind of like, kind of like what Lakewood is. Lakewood has a bunch of outdoor patios and you get the same vibe from Cleveland Heights. And you're close to University Circle. It's a great location. I'm not going to lie. Okay, all right, we're gonna stay on the east side and we are now gonna go to Euclid. And Euclid was not on the list last week. Um, and this is why. There are 33, no, there's only three for sale. I thought it looked like three. I had a little, there's three for sale in Euclid. Um, and Euclid has some areas that are right on the lake. So the schools get a D. So you keep that in mind. But niche dot com gives it a give us gives it a C plus. Um, and I wanted to highlight this house on Lake Edge. And part of Euclid belonged to this called the Lake Edge Beach Association. This house has been on the market for 53 days. It's $180,000. Oh. Um, so, okay, so that was Euclid. Now let's head back west to Fairview Park, another suburb that did not make the list last week. There are two for sale in Fairview Park. And let me just make sure that's still a thing. Um, okay, we did Cleveland Heights. Nope, there's only one for sale now. Which one's, there's, okay. Well, I only did this one. This one's on the market for eight days on Woodstock. 183,500. It is, Oh, it's super teeny. It's like a little cottage. It's 660 square feet for $184,000. And it's very outdated. So it's cute. 
one thing about Fairview, my best friend lives in Fairview. I have I think the schools are, they're a small school district. The school's going to see, but niche.com gives it an A. It's a great location. It's right um, off Lorraine Road, right when you're coming west from the Camps Corners, West Park area. You're close to the Metro Parks. You're close to 480. Um, you're a little bit south, but you're right down the road from the airport, yet you don't get that airport noise. Beautiful beautiful neighborhoods. Things don't really last long. And like I said, there's only one for sale right now. The other one on West 227 sold in one day. And I had a picture of it here. I'll put it up here anyways. 249.9, it was going for three beds, two full baths, over 1,600 square feet for $250,000. So this one for 184, 660 square feet is kind of crazy. My phone is ringing. So that's Fairview Park. Okay. We're going to go back east, and the only reason I'm going to bring this up, I have a picture of it, Gates Mills, which I was shocked. I'm like, Gates Mills is one of the most expensive suburbs. I think it's the most expensive suburb in all of Cuyahoga County. There, That's where all the million, multi-million dollar homes are, like by Chagrin Falls. I've done videos on them. Beautiful. And I'm like, what is this house? And it's $250,000. Well, guess what? That's the minimum bid. It's up for auction. It's really dated. Um, but I just, for giggles, I'm like, no, you can see what you're going to get. And who knows what it's going to go for. It's going on the, I think the auction is like May 11th. But only, yeah, so nothing out there. There's no Chagrin Falls at this price point. No Gates Mills. No Solon. No Moreland Hills. None of those are on this list. So if you're looking out in those areas, you're going to be paying top price, okay? So let's now, okay, so we talked about Cleveland Heights. Now I'm going to go back west and let's talk about Lakewood. Hold on. Yep, it's still for sale. Alger Road. There's only one house for sale in Lakewood, which is crazy. Now Lakewood made the cut last week. I don't know if you remember, I said it was $475,000 on the same street that my mother lives I had to call my mom and let her know, like, can you believe this? She knew exactly which house it was. Unbelievable. This house is, this house is adorable. I would buy this house. I actually know the agent, the, the real estate agent. It's her house. She used it as an Airbnb. Um, it's on Alger Road. It's called the Green Indigo House. It's been on the market seven days. It's $250,000. It's only 900 square feet, two beds, one bath. It's so cute, and I'm not sure why she's selling it if she just doesn't want to be in the Airbnb business. It doesn't look that cute. It's like blue on the outside, but um, Alger Road in Lakewood, if you're if you're interested in, if you like the way this looks, um, I think it's adorable. And if I was looking to get an Airbnb, I would definitely check this out. So only one in Lakewood in that price range. Crazy. Okay, now let's head back out east to Lindhurst. There are four for sale and there's one, two, three, four, five. Actually, there's five for sale now. One just came on the market yesterday afternoon. I'll take a picture of it. It's on Meadowood. Um, so here's the thing about, let me, before I talk about Lynnhurst, Lynnhurst borders Beechwood. Um, I sold a house. I just sold a house to a retiree last summer and it's, <laughs> So Lyndhurst is part of the South Euclid Lyndhurst school systems, and those schools get a D. Niche.com gives it an A minus. And I'm gonna say there's a lot of um, retirees that live in Lyndhurst. A lot of ranches, a lot of there's beautiful by the parks. Um, I just I took my client who I sold the house last summer. I took her to lunch closer to Thanksgiving, and she found me like, oh my god, there's this park right around the corner. She's Right around the corner, I mean, she's literally on the border of Beechwood. You could walk to Legacy Village from her house. Um, and I think that's why Niche gives it an A minus because she's not worried about the schools. So it's really a good place for retirees. And I think Niche even mentions like it's a really great suburb for retirees. They have a lot of um, amenities for retirees, a lot of services for retirees and seniors. There's only four for sale. No, I lied. There's five now. So this one on Meadowwood. Three beds, two full baths. It's a ranch. It's on a slab. And actually, my client, we finally found her house, but it had a full basement. Such a cool basement. And she's like, I'm never going to use this basement. I'm not going to go down the steps. 
this house would have been. In fact, this house looks a lot like the one I sold her, except this one's on a slab. 18, over 1,800 square feet. Really cute. Um, so taxes are pretty high out there. East side, the taxes are a little bit higher. Seven, $5,700 a year. So that's that one. And then I want to show you this one for $220,000. Um, spent on the market for eight days on Edgefield. Three beds, two baths, about 1,500 square feet. So it's a great area. If you want to be by Beechwood, you don't, you know, you're not really concerned about the school. I think it's a great place. I would live there when I'm retired, close to the highway, easy to get around. It's great. So there you go. Okay, staying on the east side. This house just came on the market today in Mayfield Heights. Good school system, really close to the Beechwood area, real close to highways. Uh, you're not far from downtown Cleveland. This thing is going to sell. And it's uh, on Genesee, $249.9, three beds, two full baths. It's got a completely, it's totally brand new kitchen. The basement was just finished with a full brand new bath down there. Super nice. This one will probably be gone by Monday. Mark my words. Okay, now let's head back west, North Olmstead. And I just made sure, and it's still for sale. It's been on the market for three days, 175000 North Olmstead is situated just west of Fairview Park. Um, and then just south of Westlake. I just did a North Olmstead video, I think. I think I did. Yeah, I just did one. Um, this is on Bentley. It's very, very dated. Three beds, one full bath, one half bath, a thousand square feet for $175,000. So, and it'll probably go, somebody's going to get it for that price to be in North Olmstead. People's North Olmstead still flies off the shelf. To only have one house, especially North Olmstead is kind of like a working class area you know that's where I, I couldn't afford I was a school teacher and my husband was just starting his moving company so we just didn't have a lot of money but I needed a four-bedroom house and yeah and we actually called our neighborhood West Park West because all of us in our little neighborhood we all grew up in West Park and our kids were fine so North Olmstead still still sells like hotcakes but only one in that price range so it's crazy um, okay, so we're going to stay west, but we're going to hop on the highway and go south, right off 71 to North Royalton. There are two for sale, both on York Road, which is a busy street, and they've both been on the market for over 120 days, and they're both right around, um, one's 232000 the other one's 250 Very dated. Um, yeah, so... That's the thing. North Royalton, the houses are pretty expensive. Um, really nice. Right on the border. It's right south of Strongsville. So you're close to Strongsville Mall. Uh, right on the border of Medina County. So, you know, being right by 71 is huge. Okay. Now, we're going to go back north a little bit to Olmstead Falls. One house for sale in this price range. And I think I just did an Olmstead. I just did an Olmstead Falls video as well. Cute downtown. I love it. It's like this historic district. You got a covered bridge. You got cute little shops, little restaurants, beautiful developments. I mean, you can get a house in there for $800,000. Now, this house is on Water Street, which is right by downtown. So you can walk to all these places. It's been on the market 12 days. So it's probably going to sell. $225,000, almost 1,600 square feet, and a thousand square foot finished basement, three beds, two full ba two baths. So not bad if you want to live in Olmstead Falls, close to Great Northern Mall, uh, close to 480. You're on the, also on the border of Berea, so you have the, the uh, metro parks there. Olmstead Falls is a great spot. I love it. Um, I have a lot of friends that live there. So if you're looking for something under 250, you might want to check this one out. Okay, now let's head to Parma. Um, I need to do another Parma video. I love Parma. It's it, it's the butt of Cleveland jokes. Um, it's been on TV. They make fun of it. People put pink flamingos in their yards. Uh, they say it's the Polish capital of Cleveland. And it is. They have a Polish village. They have a Ukrainian village. So, you know, they're famous for their pierogies. It's fun. You, there's so many bars in Parma with great restaurants. Um, and Parma used to be, and I'm not surprised, there's 11 houses for sale in Parma. And it has been in... in well, Lakewood used to be like first-time buyers. 
this is where you're going to start. You're going to start in Lakewood. And then, you know, as you, your family grows, you'll move out to more expensive homes. Not anymore. One for sale, right? Parma is now becoming, and it's always been, this is a great starter suburb. Um, or when you're done with kids or even, if you know, raise your family there. Parma is known for small little brick bungalows. Um, so not, you're going to find some bigger houses, but really, um, you're going to get a smaller home, but the houses really sell. I'm surprised that there's 12 on the market. So it just depends which one is which. This one has been on the market for six days on Fordham. Three beds, one full bath, one half bath, almost 1,200 square feet, lots of upgrades, part, a partially finished basement, $200,000. So not so bad. I got the picture of it up here. So you're going to range, you know, there's a house for two hundred. dollars $45,000, but it's been on the market 84 days. So who knows what's wrong with it? That's why I'm really only focusing on homes that have been on the market for two weeks or less, because if it's been on the market for, I would say in this, the way this market is this year, if it's on the market more than, more than 10 days, it might be overpriced or there's something slightly wrong with it. Just like that one on Rocky River Drive. I'm like, what's wrong with it? It's been on the market 30 days. So I'm not really focusing on homes that have been on the market a long time ago, unless that's all there is. Like that one in those two in North Royalton. Parma, right off 480. So you're close to, Cle you're so close to Cleveland. You can see Cleveland from 480 and you're close to the airport. So great location. Now, the main streets like State, what is the other one? They're very busy streets. So if you have to get off 480 and drive down, you are probably going to get into some traffic. Um, but it doesn't stop a lot of people. It's a ton of people live there. Schools are average, but it's a great little town. I love it. So, so we have Parma. Now we have Parma Heights. Parma Heights to me, it's still part of the Parma school system, but you're going to get those bigger homes um, kind of hilly. It's just, I don't know. It's like Parma on steroids. Uh, there's three for sale. There's still for sale. This one on Chesterfield, it's been on the market three days, 234, 9,000. It's going for 1,700 square feet right now. Oh, but gets this three bedrooms, one bath. It's right now it's a rental. And this is, it's, there's one pick. Although I, I wonder if they have any more picks on it. Um, Nope, one picture. And guess what? You can't even get in to see it. And they don't have any pictures of the inside. And you are not allowed to even go see it unless you have an accepted offer. Um, no showings until after accepted offer. So there you go. Um, that's Parma Heights. Okay, we're going to go back east again to Richmond Heights. Richmond Heights is, Heights is part of the South Euclid Lindhurst Schools. And we already talked about that. They get a D. There are 44, no, there are four homes for sale. Uh, I sold a home last summer. It's probably been two years now. Some big, beautiful homes. Uh, these four homes are still for sale. Okay, here's the thing about Richmond Heights. It's kind of like a 1980s, a lot of it was built in like the 1980s. Um, you, I think you've got to drive through Euclid to get to Richmond Heights. Um, so maybe these homes are a little dated. Every single one of these homes in Richmond Heights has been on the market for 83 days or more. Um, one's been on the market for 315 days, another one 178 days. Um, this one I have, this is the one has been on the market the least amount of days on Geraldine, 82, 80, well today, 83 days, $211,000. Three bedrooms, two full baths, one half bath for 1,400 square feet. So all the other ones in Richmond Heights, um, been over the, on the market for over a hundred days, hundred days, which is crazy. Um, the lady, I sold her house. She was a widow. Her kids were grown. She was a doctor. Um, she was a baby doctor. Her kids all went to private schools and they're all very, very successful. Big, huge house. Oh my gosh. But it was so dated, but I sold it. No problem because we priced it right. So I don't know what's going on with these other houses in Richmond Heights, really close to the Metro parks over there, close to Cleveland, Close to the hospitals, so not a bad area. But that's that. Um, I, keep, I, I think I'm saying that's that a lot. Um, okay, let's go back. Kind of in the Parma area, a little bit south of it, Seven Hills. I think Seven Hills is beautiful. 
When I think of Seven Hills, I think of these big sprawling ranches with the base finished basements that's just as big as the upstairs. In fact, my good friend Wally, he lives with his mother. They live in Seven Hills, and it's, that's exactly what they have. They have almost an entire house in their basement. Um, they have a kitchen. They have a living room. They have a bedroom. Full like, everything's there. That's where they keep the pool table. Um, there are three for sale in Seven Hills. No, there's not. Two of them sold yesterday. There's one for sale today. So the other two sold. Um, Parkview, did I get it? Nope, I'm gonna have to get it. This one was on the market for five days on East Clearview, right here. 193,000, three beds, one full bath, one half bath. Not even 1,200 square feet for less. It needs all new carpeting, but the basement was just as big as the upstairs. Okay, heading back east, Shaker. Uh, Shaker, I've sold quite a few homes in Shaker. It's on the east side. Shaker is um, beautiful. My cousin lives in Shaker. There's one of some of the most beautiful homes in Shaker Heights. Really high taxes, but just walkable and just so many. And I did a whole video in Shaker, like right, right around Christmas time. And uh, these were all homes that people bought and they fixed them up. I was even able to go in them and I filmed the insides of these homes. They were stunning. My daughter was dog sitting for my cousins out there and she just loved it. She's, she wants to live in Shaker now. She would get up in the morning, walk the dogs right around the neighborhood. Like all the Christmas lights were still up and she'd go to the gym. She belongs to Planet Fitness so she can go anywhere. She'd go to Whole Foods. She just was in love with the Shaker. And that's what they call it. They call it the Shaker lifestyle. Now, so you're going to get a lot of homes that need gutting for this price point or there's a lot of multifamilies. In fact, right around the same time period, I sold a multifamily home and it needed some work, but not a terrible amount of work. Um, I need to check in with them and see how they're doing. They moved up here from Florida. Uh, there are only four for sale. Um, this one, it's a fixer upper and it's kind of like a town. I think this one's a townhouse. It's been on the market for 12 days, 230,000, 229,900. So 230,000, five beds, three full baths on Holbrook. Is this the one? Yeah, it's like a townhouse. It is a total gut. Yeah, and it's 2,300 square feet. So, <clears throat> but if you're okay with the taxes, oh, the taxes on this one, over $11,000. And it needs to be completely remodeled. And yeah, too much for me. Too much for me. Okay. We are finishing it. We're almost at the end of the alphabet. So we're staying in the Shaker area. We're going to go just a little bit further. I don't even know if it's west or east, but we're staying out that way. South Euclid. There are 12 for sale. South Euclid is really close to University Heights. It's home to Notre Dame College. Okay. Uh, not Notre This one is on Lucille. It just came on the market yesterday. Let's see if it's still there. And it's 200, no. $195,000 and it's still for sale. Um, it's three beds, one bath, almost 1,200 square feet. To me, that's small. Anything under 2,000 square feet to me is small. Um, I could maybe wait, if I didn't have any kids, I could probably make 1,500 square feet work, but I don't know. To me, anything under that is really small. Um, this one has been on the market for 80 days on South Belvoir. It's a split level, um, 248,000, 2,400 square feet. So I wanted to kind of give you, you know, like here's a typical, you know, here's a bigger house, here's a smaller house. But here's the price difference, which makes sense. Three beds, two full baths, one half bath, 2,400 square feet. And I don't know if you've seen a pattern we have not, in all of these homes we looked at, we've seen very few four-bedroom homes. They all seem to be three-bedroom homes. So keep that in mind. And not that there's not some. I'm seeing plenty of fours. <clears throat> but the ones I've been picking that are right on the new market, brand new on the market, they're all just about three. Okay, we are going to head back west and a little bit south, south of the airport, south of Berea, and it is Strongsville, just north of North Royalton. One home for sale. Strongsville, I was just out there on Tuesday. You got uh, Strongs, they call it South Park Mall, Strongsville Mall. You name it, the shopping's out there. Um, so very good place for shopping. Like if you're in North Royalton, you're going to go there. If you're in Berea, you're going to go there. Um, all the big restaurants are there. There's a Costco there. 
Um, one home for sale. They have beautiful developments there. One for sale on Stapleton. It's been on the market for six days. Um, and it's kind of like a condo, but it's a single, it's considered a single family, 2349. It's called Huntington Park Estates. Um, and it's two beds, two baths. And you have to pay every month, in addition to a quarterly fee, $100 a month for your HOA. But you don't have to do your lawn or anything like that. So it's maintenance free. This one is pretty outdated though, but it does have its own pool, a clubhouse, tennis courts. So if that's something you're interested in, that's a great spot. Close to shopping, close to Cleveland, close to the airport. Um, yeah, Strongsville's cool. Okay, heading back out east, right by South Euclid is University Heights and right by Cleveland Heights, there are eight for sale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven for sale. I don't know what fingers I'm holding up. So one of them sold. Let's see, did Baintree sell? Nope. This one just sold. It's three days on the market. Baintree. $210,000. Very, very dated. 1,900 square feet. Three beds. Two full baths. One half bath. There's a picture of it up here. University Heights has some beautiful homes. Just like Cleveland Heights. Just like Shaker. Um, it's home to John Carroll. And John Carroll is situated. I went to college there my freshman year. It's situated right in the middle of a neighborhood. Like, so we would walk out and, you know, we'd go for walks and you're right in the middle of this beautiful neighborhood. Um, pretty cool. So close to Beechwood. Um, this other one has been on the market for 123 dice art. Uh, yeah, 124 days on the market. $249,000. Um, but here's a four bedroom. One full bath, three half baths, tw almost 2,300 square feet. Um, let me see what it looks like. Does it need, but it's been on the market for that long. So it needs some work. And also this one says it will be POS compliant. So University Heights, Cleveland Heights, point of sale inspections. And they're saying this one will be, and this is a brick. It's pretty, it's got some, you know, it needs some little bit of landscaping, but if you're looking for an all brick, um, oh, it's beautiful inside. Hardwood floors, decent looking kitchen. It's a nice house. I'm surprised it's been on the market for so long, especially if it's going to be POS compliant. To me, that takes a lot of the worry out. Okay, one last suburb because we're at the end of the alphabet. We are going back west to Westlake. I love Westlake. Crocker Park is there, which is this outdoor shopping area with a movie theater. It's got a Trader Joe's. Um, we were just there a week ago today because uh, it's April and the weather in Cleveland stinks. In fact, it's funny because last Thursday I was doing my video on $500,000 and it was one sunny day. We had all week and I, after doing the video, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Can we please just go sit outside? And we did. We went to Bar Louie, sat outside. I'm like, I just, I got to get outside. And then it rained all weekend. And today's Thursday again. Beautiful sunny day, 60 some degrees. Yesterday was 50 degrees. It rained all last weekend, like I said, from last Thursday. And it's gonna start raining again tomorrow and we're not gonna see the sun until maybe next Thursday. So there you go. <clears throat> so Westlake, love Westlake. Great schools, great amenities, great rec center, close to Cleveland, close to Lake Erie, close to I-90, not far from the airport. There are two for sale in Westlake in this price range. They're still for sale. One is this one's on Dover Court. Uh, 16 days on the market. It is a total gut, $217,000. Uh, three beds, two full baths, one half bath, um, 1,800 square feet. It's a total gut. Um, Dover Center, not Dover Court. Dover Center, and that's kind of a busy street. And so is the next one, Center Ridge Road, on the market for 24 days, but it's on an acre. 219.9 it's going for two baths one two beds one bath 887 square feet and that's it in Westlake in that price range which is kind of a bummer because well look my kids were like the whole time we grew up in North Olmsted why don't we live in Westlake they had a brand new school built of course North Olmsted finally got theirs built but my kids were already gone um but beautiful. I mean, a lot of the football players, Indians players, well, not Indians anymore. They're the gardens. They live in Westlake. A lot of them live in West uh, Crocker Park, but there's beautiful developments. 
million dollar homes. I mean, there's a street called Millionaire's Row. Give me a break. So there you have it, guys. 122 homes in Cuyahoga County. I just handpicked. I went through a lot. We did see a lot of homes. Thank you for, if you stuck to the end, uh, I thank you for it. And if you stuck to the end, then you really definitely need to subscribe. If any of these homes looked interesting to you, give me a call. You want to see them? Give me a call. Send me a text. Send me an email. I answer and I will see you next time. We are going to head back west and a little bit south 
south of the airport, south of Berea, and it is Strongsville, just north of North Royalton. One home for sale. Strongsville, I was just out there on Tuesday. You got uh, Strongs, they call it South Park Mall, Strongsville Mall. You name it, the shopping's out there. Um, so very good place for shopping. Like if you're in North Royalton, you're going to go there. If you're in Berea, you're going to go there. Um, all the big restaurants are there. There's a Costco there. Um, one home for sale. They have beautiful developments there. One for sale on Stapleton. It's been on the market for six days. Um, and it's kind of like a condo, but it's a single, it's considered a single family. 2349. It's called Huntington Park Estates. Um, and it's two beds, two baths. And you have to pay every month, in addition to a quarterly fee, $100 a month for your HOA. But you don't have to do your lawn or anything like that. So it's maintenance-free. This one is pretty outdated, though. But it does have its own pool, a clubhouse, tennis courts. So if that's something you're interested in, that's a great spot. Close to shopping, close to Cleveland, close to the airport. Um, yeah, Strongsville's cool. Okay, heading back out east. Right by South Euclid is University Heights, and right by Cleveland Heights, there are eight for sale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven for sale. I don't know what fingers I'm holding up. So one of them sold. Let's see. Did Baintree sell? Nope. This one just sold. It's three days on the market. Baintree. $210,000. Very, very dated. 1,900 square feet. Three beds. Two full baths. One half bath. There's a picture of it up here. University Heights has some beautiful homes, just like Cleveland Heights, just like Shaker. Um, it's home to John Carroll, and John Carroll is situated, I went to college there my freshman year. It's situated right in the middle of a neighborhood. Like, so we would walk out and, you know, we'd go for walks and you're right in the middle of this beautiful neighborhood. Um, pretty cool. So close to Beechwood. Um, this other one has been on the market for 123 dice art. Uh, yeah, 124 days on the market, $249,000. Um, but here's a four bedroom, one full bath, three half baths, tw almost 2,300 square feet. Um, let me see what it looks like. Does it need, but it's been on the market for that long. So it needs some work. And also this one says it will be POS compliant. So University Heights, Cleveland Heights, point of sale inspections. And they are saying this one will be, and this is a brick it's pretty, it's got some, you know, it needs some little bit of landscaping, but if you're looking for an all brick, um, oh, it's beautiful inside, hardwood floors, decent looking kitchen, it's a nice house. I'm surprised it's been on the market for so long, especially if it's going to be POS compliant. To me, that takes a lot of the worry out. Okay, one last suburb, because we're at the end of the alphabet. We are going back west to Westlake. I love Westlake. Crocker Park is there, which is this outdoor shopping area with a movie theater. It's got a Trader Joe's. Um, we were just there a week ago today because uh, it's April and the weather in Cleveland stinks. In fact, it's funny because last Thursday I was doing my video on $500,000 and it was one sunny day. We had all week and I, after doing the video, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Can we please just go sit outside? And we did. We went to Bar Louie. Sat outside. I'm like, I just, I got to get outside. And then it rained all weekend. And today's Thursday again. Beautiful sunny day, 60 some degrees. Yesterday was 50 degrees. It rained all last weekend, like I said, from last Thursday. And it's going to start raining again tomorrow. And we're not going to see the sun until maybe next Thursday. So there you go. <clears throat> so Westlake. Love Westlake. Great schools, great amenities, great rec center, close to Cleveland close to Lake Erie, close to I-90, not far from the airport. There are two for sale in Westlake in this price range. They're still for sale. One is, this one's on Dover Court. Uh, 16 days on the market. It is a total gut, $217,000. Uh, three beds, two full baths, one half bath, um, 1,800 square feet. It's a total gut. Um, Dover Center, not Dover Court, Dover Center, and that's kind of a busy street. And so is the next one, Center Ridge Road, on the market for 24 days, but it's on an acre. 219.9, it's going for two baths, one, two beds, one bath, 
887 square feet. And that's it in Westlake in that price range, which is kind of a bummer because, well, look, my kids were like, the whole time we grew up in North Olmsted, why don't we live in Westlake? They had a brand new school built. Of course, North Olmsted finally got theirs built, but my kids were already gone. Um, but beautiful. I mean, a lot of the football players, Indians players, well, not Indians anymore. They're the gardens. They live in Westlake. A lot of them live in West uh, Crocker Park, but there's beautiful developments, million dollar homes. I mean, there's a street called Millionaire's Row. Give me a break. So there you have it, guys. 122 homes in Cuyahoga County. I just handpicked. I went through a lot. We did see a lot of homes. Thank you for, if you stuck to the end, uh, I thank you for it. And if you stuck to the end, then you really definitely need to subscribe. If any of these homes looked interesting to you, give me a call. You want to see them? Give me a call. Send me a text. Send me an email. I answer and I will see you next time.